I had the honor of presenting at the Johns Hopkins Patient Education Day for Head and Neck Cancer, along with Dr. Jeremy Richmond and Dr. Harry Kwan and others. I told some of the stories of my own family and try to get a sense of what patients actually go through. But what I do want to do is I want to be able to correctly imagine what it is to exactly go through what you're going through because that will help me working with these physicians and nurses and great staff to build better programs for you. So for example, I know that, um, that the great speech language pathology uh, program resources and staff here, they've got evidence-based you know, scientific ways to tell you how to stretch your jaw and do swallowing exercises before, during, and after treatment. I also know that just like any exercise, workout, or regimen, this stuff is complex. I myself do many you know, trying to get in shape, and you know, if you told me to tell you what this workout was, what these said first, I wouldn't remember. This stuff is really hard. So combine that with all the medication uh, rules and the complicated care plans, and what you've got, what you've got is a scenario that where you're in the clinic, and then there's a lot of time that passes, and then you're in the clinic again, and a lot of time that passes. So Dr. Richmond was the one who said that what the technology can possibly do is fill in the gaps, the spaces between the follow-up visits, and become a structure, and help you to understand what you're supposed to do, help you keep track of when you're doing it, and help you be connected to the care team in between these visits. So if it works out well, uh, the way that I hope it works out is that we can start to do away with the paper and pencil and, and the whiteboards and we can use a structure and content and care planning that comes from the physicians and the nurses and the staff here not from technology professionals and not here to not post it that way. So my guess is, if I was in your position, I'd probably be pulling out my hair on some of these days and trying to remember everything to an audience of people <coughs> is sometimes the best way to, uh, to connect. So my, my dad's 83 and uh, he's had trouble swallowing you know, for, for a number of years now. And he's had this amazing experience and I won't say with the software, but amazing experience with the care team at Johns Hopkins, and mostly more importantly, an experience where he now feels after being retired, being a professor for many years, he feels like he feels more hopeful about life in general. He feels more in control and he knows that his data and his experiences is adding to a system of care that will, one will hopefully help patients like you. He really believes that he is paying it forward in a way. And you know, I was hoping he was going to be here today. That would have been awesome. And he would tell you, he would go on and on actually, in saying that it uh, it really has changed his life in a fundamental way to know that by taking care of himself correctly, he may one day help you, even though he's never met you. This is my mom. So my mom, uh, my dad used the iPad. My mom was like, I'm not going to touch this thing. But after my dad getting all the attention for like a month and a half, she's like, all right, I'm in. I want to do this thing. So I, I got her connected to a nutritionist. You know, we worked in, in the same software, in the same program remotely. You know, monitored and, and gave her advice and, and so forth. And she lost 14 pounds in a month and a half. And she's either we lost them, uh, stories all the time. So that's not really the point. But the point is that she started to feel more hopeful also. And it's sort of like this, uh, this glowing, nice feel in the family of uh, two seniors using technology. But it wasn't a story about technology, it was a story about people. Um, and now she's actually working with John Hopkins in the um, Guillermo. Uh, center right here. I was just up on Monday uh, where she was um, being treated for macular degeneration and for cataracts and she's going to be using the software to help manage her own symptoms, take pictures of the eye, the progression, and manage the different types of medications. It's, it's a long regimen. It's, you know, it's four weeks and four weeks and six weeks. 
So it's very different than what you're going through, but in a way, it's kind of similar. And then there's me. So I started, in, in Silicon Valley, they've got this term called dog fooding. Dog fooding is when you're a software developer and you use your own product, like using your own dog food. So I've been dog fooding since November, the beta test, you know, my own software. So I'm logging all the time, logging, you know, my, my mood, my medication, logging everything. Um, and I'm working with a nutritionist, and she's getting more and more worried. And I start getting freaked out. And then she emails me that sentence. Then I started really getting freaked out because I realized that what this nutritionist had in front of her when she was looking on her laptop, she had a view of my life that no one's ever had before. No doctor has ever had, no nurse has ever had, because they see me for a very discreet period of time. But she has been following me almost like reality TV. You know, two minutes a day, 30 seconds a day, but getting a cross-section view of my health, and now she's actually worried. I'm like, uh oh. Um, so my parents had such great experiences here, and, I, and I've had such great experiences. I said, I'm going to go here. So I went to an infectious disease specialist to figure out what was going wrong. Um, I get really tired during the day. I won't go into my own symptoms. It's not about me. But the point is, without sort of logging what was going on with me, the infectious disease specialist would not have had the data to understand that, OK, it's not this. It's not celiac. It's not this. I'm not going to waste my time and waste your money and our money doing all these tests. I'm actually going to look at some rare stuff because exercise is great, your sleep is great, your nutrition is great, and I know that because you've proven it through over 2,000 entries in your app. But I am worried about your fatigue, which also correlates to this and this that I see in the lab test. So we ran some esoteric tests, and now they actually think I may have an autoimmune disease of my, of my liver. All things. You know, I, I didn't expect that. I just heard that this past week. So I'm now going to see another specialist at Johns Hopkins in about six weeks. And I'm dog fooding, but this is it. This is life. We've all got something. Uh, but I can tell you that I'm trying to get ahead of the game, and I'm not. I'm not feeling down. I'm not, you know, feeling sorry for myself. I know what the answer is going to be: sleep, nutrition, exercise. Take the medications when you're supposed to take them, be in control of your own destiny, and feel hopeful. So maybe that's not so similar to anyone and everyone, including family members, caretakers. We've all got something. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so we got two, two, two.